today we take a deep dive into Goya. Goya is an acclaimed name as one of the world's oldest luxury leather goods and trunks company that is still very much active today. The French luxury handbag fashion house Goya began with a quiet inception and built a brand and reputation based on prestige. Goya is now one of the most coveted, albeit discreet, under the radar brands in the world. But it is this same under the radar reputation that is the pinnacle of ultimate extravagance, French opulence and premium craftsmanship for its buyers. And this is what has cemented Goya's status as a major luxury fashion player. Welcome to Creme de Luxury, the place for an exceptional luxury lifestyle. With what would seem like minimal effort. Goya is one of the most respected and subtle trunk makers in the world that has thrived since its humble beginnings, flourishing through word of mouth promotion in the upper circles through high influential clients and royalty. Goya, however, did not start as Goya. Goya's humble beginnings are rooted in the house of Martin, which was founded in 1972 by Pierre-Francois Martin. At a time of the golden age of trunk makers, Pierre-Francois Martin started as a later and packer and a Parisian trunk maker, specialising in box making and other pieces of luxury luggage for the prestigious French aristocracy, as referenced by the original House of Martin store sign which featured references to the three traditional crafts of box making, trunk making and packing at the core of the business. Martin's work especially was extremely sought after, so much so that Martin was bestowed with the title of official purveyor of Marie Caroline de Bourbon Cecile, the Duchess of Berry, and became the official supplier of Her Royal Highness. This was great for business for the House of Martin. And even Napoleon III is said to have used Goya luggage. From the time of the Belle Epoque onwards, Goya was the luggage of the high society and elite. During Martin's early success and popularity, he moved his store from 4 Rue du Nueve du Capucins to 347 Rue Saint Honoré, now under 233 Rue Saint Honoré, due to a new street numbering policy where Goya's flagship store still remains to this day. Pierre-Francois Martin went on to mentor an employee named Louis-Henri Morel, as he had no children of his own, but he did have a guardianship of a young female ward called Pauline, who he married to Louis-Henri Morel and gave the business as dowry to Morel, who became his son-in-law in turn. Morel also took on a young protégé named Francois Goya. He joined Mal Morel, which was changed from House of Martin as an apprentice. When Louis Henri Morel died in 1852, Goya took over the business. And in 1853, like tradition, renamed the house House of Goya a year later. Still choosing to follow in the ways of his predecessors, Goya continued to focus on box making, trunk making and other packing for the French aristocracy. Under the acclaimed names like Martin, Morel and Goya, the company became a highly recognised international brand. Rebranding the house to Goya saw a revitalisation with a brand focus placed on the manufacturing process and Goya began opening workshops and boutiques across the world. Goya also opened a workshop in the Parisian suburb of Raison, separate from their flagship store, to gain full control over the manufacturing process in order to maintain their exceptional quality, which Goya understood was at the heart of providing premium quality and craftsmanship. Francois Goya led the house for another 32 years before passing the house of Goya to his son in 1885. Edmund Goya took over the Goya house and was crucial in moving Goya towards international success, totally revolutionising the business with new designs and focus on expanding the house, which was a momentous movement for Goya, scaling the brand to the international mainstream. Edmund envisioned an even greater level of excellence 
and capitalised on Goya's international acclaim and made it even bigger. Edmund saw the store as an opportunity, drawing on his father's vision and transformed Goya into a luxury conglomerate catering to the upper-class clientele. Edmund also opened three new stores in France and began creating commercials for Goya. Edmund Goya even began showcasing Goya's luxury travel goods to a global audience through taking part in the world expositions. Edmund spread the fame of quality goods displaying the company's full range of trunks, briefcases, suitcases and accessories. The 1900 World Expo, held in Paris, earned Edmund Goya the bronze medal and eight years later, at the Franco-British Exposition in London, Edmund and Goya won the gold. This prompted Goya to open three stores in Monte Carlo, Biarritz and Bordeaux, as well as trading offices in New York and London. The London boutique is located on Mount Street, on the same street as today's Goya's Mayfair boutique. Edmund also started the Chic du Chien pet sheet range, which was also met with great success. Edmund Goya was very keen on developing a range of pet accessories, seen in earlier catalogues and invoices dating from as far back as the 1890s. The Goya pet range is made up of items for dogs, cats and even monkeys. Goya formally opened a boutique devoted to Le Chic du Chien in 2008 at 352 Rue Saint-Honoré, across the street from its historic flagship store. However, the biggest contribution Edmund made was the introduction of the Goyardin canvas in 1892. This was monumental in setting Goya apart as an exceptional leader in the field of design, material and utility. The Goyardin canvas was an exclusive, unique and innovative product in the trunk making industry. The Goyardin is made from coated cloth fusion of linen, hemp and cotton and was extremely durable, lightweight and waterproof. Edmund was said to be inspired by his lug, driver ancestry when creating both the material and the design of the cloth. This is evidenced by the iconic piled dot pattern that forms chevrons which represents log stacks. The goyardine also involves applying a ground colour and adding an additional three successive layer of colours to create a symbolic raised pattern making it look almost three-dimensional. These chevrons are then juxtaposed against the background colour of the product to form the small and numerous three-letter Ys. It was also Edmund Goya's ancestors who used these actual fabrics in their water-resistant work clothes and found them beneficial specifically for their flexibility and longevity. The three chevrons in a Y formation is said to symbolise three centuries of the Goya household and their history of the Goya family as log drivers from the village of Clemcy in the province of Burgundy, who were members of the Compagnon de Riviere, French for the Companions of the River, a guild of transport makers that moved firewood by inland waterway from the forests of Morvan to Paris. The Goya family were lumbermen long before they turned to luggage making. Apart from being unique, durable, strong, soft and waterproof, the Goyardine canvas is a print very hard to duplicate and counterfeit. The house can actually be said to be the queen of all monograms, as the brand is just one year older than Louis Vuitton. Unlike most designers, Goya doesn't use its first initials to structure the pattern. Edmond Goya's name written in white is the only element that truly stands out whilst the address of the Paris store is coloured in two different shades of brown, with the Paris also repeated twice and arranged in a centrally symmetrical stack within one chevron, E. Goya, in white contrast to the pattern, while the 233 Rue Saint-Honoré Paris appears in two darker shades of brown, proportionally arranged in connecting chevrons. Edmund is reportedly the very first trunk maker to incorporate his name into his canvas and did so well before the year 1900. This iconic Goya print or marquage as it's known in France was a signature part of the brand marquaging or art of the hand which was popular in the 19th century 
as it was a means of differentiating between luggage makers, the same way painters would sign their painting. Edmund Goyard signed his canvas. Craftsmen would hand paint their initials and number each trunk. Later, it became more of a stylish practice, with many of Goyard's high-profile clientele designing their own distinct marquiche. From the 2000s, Goyard's signature print was no longer hand-painted, with the process now achieved through mechanised screen printing and etching and layering of dye. However, personalizations are still hand-painted by a Goyard artisan in one of the house's handful of global ateliers. And if you want the crown logo, you will need proof of royal ancestry. After Edmund's death in 1937, the Goyard company's direction management was still kept in the family and passed on to Edmund's son, Robert. The production of the Goyardine did come to a halt after World War II, as the occupation took its toll on the house and the store at 233 Rue Saint-Honoré temporarily closed operations. Robert Goyard took over the reins in 1937 and post-World War II, and once again until his death in 1979. Robert was responsible for developing and patenting the design for a new woven jacquard chevron canvas in 1965. This material was characterised by its pliable, flexible nature and was suitable for use in crafting bags and wallets. When he died in 1979, the business was taken over by his granddaughter, Isabel Goyard. Five generations of the Goyard family ran the business until 1988, when Jean-Michel Signol, a French businessman and former owner and creator of the brand Chippy, Chippy was a specialist and pioneer in designing luxury dog accessories in the 19th century. Signol struck an agreement to purchase the house from the Goyard family and since taking over, Jean Michel has managed to keep the brand thriving while ushering it into the 21st century. Jean Michel Signor invigorated the house of Goyard by cleverly focusing on the heritage of the house. He created a state of the art workshop in Carcassonne, where he was originally from, and enlisted the help of his sons, Alex, Remy, and Pierre, and eventually hired the former president of Curwe Fashion House, Mounier Moufarige, as an advisor. Signor then went on to establish new boutiques all over the world, continuing to attract a global customer base, opening retail stores in select locations across North America, Europe, Asia, and South America. Goya, in comparison to other brands, still maintains far fewer stores, even in France and the United States, where their stores are concentrated. Despite the change in ownership, Goya's missions and values have remained the same and have been upheld with Jean-Michel Signor restoring Goya to its original glory and firmly re-establishing it as an exemplar of timeless elegance, craftsmanship and exclusivity it has always been. Goya placed less focus on expansion but instead Goya is dedicated to offering its customers a high quality customer experience from their select, carefully chosen store locations. Signor has always understood that in luxury, less is always more. In addition, Signor's Goyard catalogue largely does not change from season to season, maintaining a focus on classicism and timelessness in the Goyard collection. Goyard is not only producing its famous luxury trunks and cases, they also produce bags and small leather goods and accessories. Under Signor's leadership, the Goyardine was reintroduced, which had ceased to be used by the company after World War II, and he expanded its range of colours to 10 new colours, in addition to the two traditional trims of the original black canvas Goyardine. The new colours included yellow, red, green, orange, blue, burgundy, grey, and more. Goyard has also maintained its two price categories for the special colours and the classic colours. The classic colours being black and black with trim, and the special colours being the, all the other colours. The new hues brought a bubbly pop of colour to the newly introduced bag and small leather goods and accessories, in addition to the more traditional luggage and trunks. Since the decline of people travelling with trunks, unlike in the early 1990s, Goyard's expansion to luxury weekend bags was crucial in their adaptation to modern times that rapidly boasted their popularity. 
For example, Goya's Boeing bag and Croisier bag are sought after items perfect for travel due to their flexible and durable canvas material and the ability to create customized pieces. Goya now offers four distinct product lines. Travel goods and accessories like trunks, hard-sided luggage, trolley cases, vanity cases, hat cases, weekend bags, beach bags, towels, slippers, umbrellas, pens and pencil cases. Goya provides travellers with the most luxurious accessories needed for a perfect getaway. The second line is the handbags. Goya has a large choice of handbag range, from tote bags, pouches, briefcases, clutches for men and women, together with an equally large range of matching accessories, including wallets, change purses, diaries, checkbook covers, business card holders. The third line includes their special orders. Goya works with customers to fulfill their custom-made trunk desires and luggage. Each piece is unique and entirely handmade, just like they did so in the 19th century. The fourth line is the pet accessories line. The Chic du Chien, which means canine chic line, was launched by Edmond Goya in the 19th century. It features collars, leashes, bowls, and dishes for pets, and is sold exclusively at the Chic du Chien boutique. The Chic du Chien boutique also showcases a selection of rare pieces for their animal accessories. Goya's prices range from upwards of £300 for the Saint Suplice cardholder to upwards of £500 for a wallet. Totes, like the Saint Louis, comes in at upwards of £800 for the smaller size to the Grand Blue Messenger bag coming in at upwards of £2,000 to the more expensive custom-made orders that can reach in the tens of thousands of pounds. Remaining steadfast in his commitment, Jean-Michel has ensured Goya's original traditions and values are deeply entrenched in all areas of the house and even permeates their marketing sales and in-store person. Although a strong social media presence is a must-have for most brands trying to remain relevant in the 21st century, Goya's marketing strategy doesn't follow the luxury handbag business model. Goya is actually a notoriously reclusive brand with a very minimal digital footprint and only their company website. Goya does engage in minimal digital advertising and are more or less known for their silence strategy. You will very rarely find expensive e-commerce advertising campaigns or professional photo shoots with top celebrities and very minimal advertising. And a few stockists, Goya have managed to protect their legacy. Although Goya has never opened an e-commerce channel, Goya has still found ways to communicate with their customer base in other digital ways. In fact, Goya released the first film in its history as early as 2012. Goya then opened some official so social media accounts like a Sino Weibo in 2013 and a WeChat in 2015, in addition to an Instagram account in 2016. In fact, Weibo and WeChat were the preferred channels for product releases when Goya launched a new Artois bag in 2018. Goya has also explored social media accounts on Facebook and Twitter, respectively. Goya's Instagram shares only occasional still life posts or short video clips, never a model or a famous face. It has posted less than 350 times as of this recording. Goya has more or less shunned it all but still manages to hold its own against some of the most coveted brands in the world. Goya is quoted as saying that they firmly believe in values such as exclusivity and discretion. This appeal makes Goya the ultimate status symbol for rich people. You can't even purchase through their website as Goya doesn't display prices for its goods on the website and it's impossible to find out any pricing catalogue. When many companies have tried to build a business based off of marketing and advertising efforts, Goya have kept their strategy concentrated and small, creating a limited supply of merchandise. The strategy behind Goya has been an independent one, with limited brick and mortar shops and only a few stakeholders to please. Goya sales are fueled solely by their own acclaimed reputation and excellence. A spokesperson is also quoted as saying that for Goya, luxury is a dream and revealing too much will spoil the magic. 
As a result, Goyal consciously avoids global fame and prefers to be known in limited circles as this exclusivity only adds to the desirability of having a Goya. In addition, Goya explicitly states on their website that they don't engage in e-commerce in any way. They maintain a quiet, elite customer base. Customers will need to visit one of their select number of cities that house a Goya boutique. Maybe in places like Paris, New York, Hong Kong, London, Osaka, Sao Paulo, Seoul, to name a few cities. Shopping with Goya can be quite the experience, with some customers reporting queues, sometimes stretching down the street due to their controlled system of entry. That ensures the number of customers never exceed the number of staff inside their store. Every customer is given one-on-one -on -one service by a white glove sales assistant, allowing customers to experience part of the lifestyle of European grandeur upon which the brand was established. Luggage does not come as old money as Goya. There is also a function on their website whereby users can directly interact with the brand. Goya's philosophy is to address the needs of clients visiting the boutiques, hence why they don't directly sell any of their bags online. However, they may offer a distance sell depending on your proximity to a boutique. Goyard's popularity is well known amongst the rich and famous and high society. And on their website is a list of notable long-time clients like the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, who since 1939 bought their first Goyard pieces and eventually became collectors with a portfolio of Goyard design trunks, cases, travel bags, hat boxes, pet accessories and more. Many of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor pieces were acquired by Goyard's now owner Jean-Michel Signor in 1997 when Softsby auctioned the content of their Paris house. A single lot comprised of a document case, monogram trunks, is said to have gone under the auction for over £12,000 and another collection fetched a cool £25,000 and more. The pieces are now kept in the Goyard archive a secret underground warehouse in central Paris, near the flagship at 233 Saint-Honoré, which houses nearly 700 or more items, even collections from Karl Lagerfeld. Goyard has even made special order trunks. Goyard's special order business allows customers to collaborate with Goyard to create one-of-a-kind handmade trunks and luggage to their exact specification. For Goyard, Every special order is the result of a very close creative collaboration between the customer and the Goyard team. Their website notes that for a custom-built trunk, everything is possible. However, the special order request has to be up to Goyard's standard for its own products and are up to Goyard's discretion. They have been known to turn down requests that are not considered on brand, even if it's from a recognisable name. For example, a request for a custom trunk for giant TVs was turned down. However, a request for a bespoke gardening trunk was considered imaginative, practical and timeless, and something that truly captures the essence of Goyard. Alongside their classic picnic and champagne trunks, and there was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's custom Goyard office trunk which folded out into a table and featured a bookcase and a typewriter. A special order is testament to the fact that in today's fast fashion era, Goya still focuses on durable and timeless luxury. Goya continues to draw its inspiration from its exceptional heritage to make its timeless designs and pieces that appeal to customers and connoisseurs looking for uncompromising, distinctive and premium craftsmanship, heritage and timeless appeal. Both the design studio and special order workshop look back into the archives for inspiration when crafting a new commission. When you buy a Goyai item, you will be joining the ranks of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, Pablo Picasso, Jacques Cartier, Karl Lagerfeld, and many other famous names who all orbited the globe on either steamships, trains, and aeroplanes in custom-made Goyard trunks and cases. In the era of the It's Bag, only
Joining a Goya item is like joining an elite club. The late Karl Lagerfeld even commissioned bespoke items for his beloved cat, and Goya continues to customise luggage for the elites and their well-travelled pets. Goya also started making stylish kennels and leashes in the early 20th century. Since Goya has always maintained an image of high luxury, it enables pet lovers to have further appreciation of Goya through the Chic du Chien collection. These Goya special orders, one-off pieces, are particularly in high demand, often reaching the tens of thousands of pounds at any given auction. Finding one on the second-hand luxury market is like finding a needle in a haystack. Their prices can range from well over £8,000 to over £40,000 to £50,000 for one of its 19th century style versions. The, Par the palace trunk alone is said to cost over £10,000 with additional customization starting from upwards of £100. One of the biggest selling points of Goya is their dedication to bag personalization. Your bag can be personalized at any time with initial names or even an image. In addition to the options to add vertical, horizontal or diagonal stripes to your bag, you can also pay extra to have your tote bag hand painted. Customization is the secret with Goya bags and Goya can usually inscript anything you want to your Goya bag, tote pocket or luggage or image for a hefty fee. An interesting fact is that the names of all Goya customers throughout the 19th and 20th century are found to be in Goya's filing cabinet, which maintains and keeps track of each and every order submitted through a nominal index card system. This shows Goya's unique ability to build a long-term relationship with their customers, whether they are famous or anonymous, and it is not uncommon for Goya customers to have accounts that are open for decades. The Duke and Duchess of Windsor opened theirs in 1939 and it was closed only after the passing of the Duchess in 1986. In terms of, of authenticity, all current Goya items should feature a production stamp. The stamp may be located in different places on the Goya item, as it will depend on the style of the item you possess. However, it should include an identifiable year of production in between a variation of letters and numbers. Also, the hard-sided luggage by Goya is entirely handmade by a specific trunk maker according to the highest, strictest standards. When the product has been completed, the artisan locks the serial number of the item they have crafted with its identification tag in addition to the initials. They also register that same serial number in the manufacturing log that has been keeping track of all the items made by the Goya workshop ever since John Michel Signol took over. The manufacturing register is used as a reference for instance where repairs need to be made. In 2010, Goya also created a book detailing Goya's history, but you will have to go to Paris at the original 233 Rue Saint-Honoré store and make an appointment to view it. Only 233 copies of this exclusive art book was commissioned by Signol who signed off on the project and was immersed in the book's decade of preparation in conjunction with the Zambes Publishing and art director Pierre Zenskov, commemorating Goya's achievements and heritage and offered privately to clients, complete with its own trunk. The book was dubbed a luxury bible by fashion critics. The book is now actually valued at upwards of over £7,000. The book also includes the history of the Goya family achievements during the Paris Expo Universelle in 1900 and the creation of the Paris store. The book is also about the art of travel and its development in the 20th century from early trains to grand hotels, paying tribute to the golden days of luxury travelling from horse carriage to ocean liners. It traces the history of Goya and is showcased in a special made to order trunk that is altogether a jewel case and a binding book. The book is produced with a 500 year old technique of hemp lightened with the petals of desert flower. It is printed on watermark decked vellum paper that was custom 
Domaine in France, the most renowned paper makers, Archers. The book is about sound, sight, smell and touch, according to the artistic director. The book is said to never be republished and is visible by appointment. Each customer of the book was invited to pick the colour of the trunk canvas for the book, which was also initialed and adorned with stripes in the shade of their choice. Each copy of the book was given a number between 1 to 233 for how many copies that they were of the book, and the number also imprinted both on the trunk and in the book. Throughout its history, the House of Goyard has been a name that speaks of an understated, quiet luxury. It's a heritage brand in the truest and purest sense of the word. Goyard is a timeless brand that produces nothing less than sleek, stylish, elegant, excellent, sophisticated goods. Any bag you purchase from Goyard will be sure to last you a lifetime. Goyard bags allow you to carry a little of Paris with you wherever you go and are bagged with genuine storied history. Goyard bags are a must-have for any fashionista with an appreciation for timelessness, minimalist sophistication. No luxury handbag collection is complete without at least one Goyard piece in that collection. With every Goya piece of luggage, there is history and unspoken heritage behind it. Goya's focus on artisanal craftsmanship and a higher quality of leather and prestige has set it apart. Goya trunks and bags also maintain the ability to hold value because they become heirlooms, something to pass down the generations to come. As the house proclaims online, in a disposable society, they are meant to last high quality and durable. Each piece of luxury luggage is an impressive piece of limited edition merchandise. Many luxury brands preach about their rarity and exclusivity, but few of them have been elusive and discreet like Goyard has been for centuries. Goyard's exclusiveness and discreetness is their biggest strength and is exactly what makes it the ultimate status symbol amongst the world's wealthiest. And that concludes our deep dive into the world's oldest luggage and trunk maker, Goya. We will see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye from Creme de Luxury.